element is slamming right into an economic and health crisis. The centuries-old challenge of racism is meeting an unprecedented tragedy of 102,000 people dead from coronavirus in the U.S. And
gas and the crowd scattered. Cars were set on fire in Los Angeles, Seattle, and Miami. Members of the California National Guard were deployed to L.A. to support law enforcement authorities amid protests, Mayor Eric Garcetti said in a statement to CNN. One demonstration in Los Angeles led to clashes between police and protesters. Police vehicles were vandalized by some protesters who kicked in the windows or sprayed the cars with graffiti. Police fired rubber bullets at demonstrators who chanted, Black Lives Matter and George Floyd. Looting could also be seen as protesters went under a metal gate inside a store and walked out with various merchandise in Los Angeles. There was also an extensive looting in Philadelphia. Protesters there also vandalized the statue of former mayor police commissioner Frank Rizzo in front of the city's municipal services building, as seen in live aerials from CNN affiliate KYW. Philadelphia police say protests at City Hall and the Art Museum began peacefully before a group of others began committing criminal acts, including vandalism, said authorities. Aerial footage from CNN affiliate WLS showing protesters in Chicago vandalizing police vehicles, some throwing water bottles at police officers in riot gear, while others were seen lifting police barricades and throwing them at police cars. At a press conference last night, Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot said that she had been engaged the past six hours in, quote, watching a tragedy unfold in our city, which started out as a peaceful protest and has now developed into criminal conduct. In Washington, D.C., U.S. Secret Service police vehicles near the White House were vandalized by protesters with graffiti, seen in video shot by CNN. In another incident, a fire could be seen burning behind the historic Hay Adams Hotel near the White House. In Atlanta, members of the National Guard gathered at Lenox Square Mall after the police department said that it would be assisted by about 20 other agencies to monitor activity and protect retail centers downtown, the Atlanta Police Department said one of their officers appears to have been struck by someone riding an ATV and sustained significant injuries as a result. The Georgia governor signed an executive order on Saturday night authorizing the activation of up to 3,000 National Guard troops statewide, Kemp calling for the activation in advance of several planned protests on Sunday. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine activated the Ohio National Guard to respond to protests in Columbus, according to a release from his office. Columbus City Council President Shannon Hardin says she and Democratic U.S. Representative Joyce Beatty of Ohio were among those sprayed during a protest in Columbus Saturday morning. Beatty tweeted a photo sequence of the incident. Democratic Representative John Lewis releasing a statement Saturday night saying he understands protesters' pain, but he called on them to refrain from rioting. I know your pain, your rage, your sense of despair and hopelessness. Justice has, indeed, been denied for too long. Rioting, looting, and burning is not the way. Organize, demonstrate, sit in, stand up, vote. Be constructive, not destructive. History has proven time and again that nonviolent, peaceful protest is the way to achieve the justice and equality that we all deserve. And ahead of what will likely be another wave of demonstrations, the NYPD is recommending any of those peaceful demonstrators simply move away from anybody that might be appearing to actually provoke police. Authorities want to focus on them instead and not the peaceful protesters, Victor Christie. It's really the message that we're hearing across the country from law enforcement officers. Polo Sandoval, uh, with a look around the country as we're seeing this national moment for us there. Polo, thanks so much. Thank you, Polo. So in Minneapolis, officials say a large group of protesters threw objects at police there. CNN's Josh Campbell uh, is there with the very latest. Josh, good morning to you. What are you seeing this morning? Yeah, good morning. Just another night of chaos here in Minneapolis. You can see behind me a convoy from the National Guard. Uh, they have been out throughout the night uh, patrolling certain neighborhoods. Uh, as the governor said yesterday, residents here will be seeing uh, a show of force, overwhelming force in his words. And we are seeing that as they move throughout the streets, uh, checking on certain neighborhoods. They've also been protecting firefighters who were battling different blazes that were set. And I want to walk over here and show you something real quick. This is we are at the fifth precinct here of the
We, what we see today that was different from yesterday is you see this fortified uh, bar these barricades outside. You see razor wire here that was now put up. Now, this was a scene last night of a clash between protesters and police officers, some of it uh, turning violent as people threw projectiles at the cops. Uh, you can see some of this equipment that was brought in to keep them back. We know uh, just days ago, the third precinct near where George Floyd uh, was taken into custody uh, by police officers and then later died, that uh, police department was set ablaze. Uh, so they don't want that same thing to happen here to another police facility. Uh, you see in and around different uh, projectiles that were fired into the crowd. Uh, the place is littered here with this type of material, the dispersants that tried to get this crowd out. Now, one thing I want to also show you, and this is, this is heartbreaking, really, when you think about it. Yesterday, at the end of the day, we were here covering the story. All of this area was cleaned up by local residents. You had people that were out in droves with brooms, with mops, cleaning up trash. As you can see, it's essentially a repeat of what it was the day before uh, as protesters came out here. And this really points out uh, a key point that some of uh, the peaceful protesters have been telling us. That is their movement here to try to shed light on uh, what they see as police brutality has really been hijacked by those who are causing destruction that are really tearing up these neighborhoods. Yet to be seen, even with the show of force from police, from the National Guard, whether these protests will continue, Christine and Victor. And Josh, uh, I want to pull the thread that you um, mentioned there. The Minnesota governor, um, Governor Waltz, talking about people who do not share uh, the values of the folks in Minnesota cities. Uh, what more did he say? What, what do you glean from those comments? Yeah, his comments yesterday were interesting in two regards. First of which he said that, you know, there will be a show of force. The residents here will be seeing the police and the National Guard actually coming out. But he also had a message to the protesters, and he wanted to make it clear that those who are coming in, they don't share the values of the local residents. Let's listen here uh, to his impassioned plea to his community. Minnesotans, um, this is a challenging time. Our great cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul are under assault by people who do not share our values, who do not value life and the work that went into this, and certainly are not here to honor George Floyd. And they need to, they need to see today that that line will stop and that order needs to be restored. And those, com those comments were echoed by some of the police officers we talked to just this morning. I can tell you this is a lot different uh, than what we've experienced over the past couple days. As our crew arrived here, our caravan, we were met uh, by about 12 police officers here. Uh, six vehicles that came near our area made contact with us. They wanted to know who we are. What was interesting is they also said they saw us coming. There's a police helicopter that's up right now. It's in what's called stealth mode. You can't actually hear it, but it is looking at these different neighborhoods and as people move in and around, they're trying to identify any groups uh, that might be agitators, that might be causing destruction. Police officers were very cordial with us. They were, they were very, very polite. But the one point that the officer was making is that so many of the people coming here aren't from here. Uh, that's something that we've continued to see. Yeah, not, that's not just a claim that's happening there in Minneapolis either. We're hearing that from other cities, including Atlanta. Thank you so much, Josh Campbell. Always good to hear from you. Thanks. Thank you, Josh. Uh, our next guest says that Black America is in a state of emergency. With us now, Tamika Mallory. She is an activist and co-founder of Until Freedom. Uh, Tamika, thanks for waking up so early for us this morning. I want to start right there with the classification of Black America being in a state of emergency. Expound that for us. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on this morning. You know, I am where Breonna Taylor was murdered in her home. I then traveled to Indianapolis um, where there were three murders, police murders in the 24 hour period, including a pregnant woman who was ran over by a police officer driving a police car. Um, and then of course I came here to Minneapolis. 
And before we got on the road, headed to uh, Louisville, we were in New York dealing with some very serious issues of police abusing people in the name of social distancing uh, enforcement. And so what that says is that all across this country, all across this nation, the issue of police abuse and the lack of relationship between police and community is real. We are seeing people dying on camera from a large artery which is not necessarily killed by police, but what we now know is that police officers knew about what the McMichaels were planning to do there in Georgia, and, and Mr. Aubrey
Central Park There's nothing you could do or say I can't escape the way I love you And I don't want to But I love you Ooh. Never been the type to Let someone see right through Ooh. See you were trying to make me laugh And other nights to change today You didn't mean to say I love you I love you And I don't want to Ooh. I wish we never learned to fly I... Maybe we should just try To tell ourselves a good lie Try to make me love another nest to 